how much money would it take for you to shave your beard? Hundred dollars, thousand, hundred thousand? What if I told you it would only take five thousand dollars and you wouldn't receive it? You'd be forced to pay it if you wanted to keep your beard. Hey guys, it's Derek from Beach Bum Beards, and today we're gonna go back to Russia in 1696, where we're gonna meet Peter the Great, who was eager to modernize his country. And after traveling through Europe, he implemented new changes, starting with a fashion police task force that enforced his beard tax laws throughout Russia. Before Peter became to Tsar of Russia in 1696, he was a co-leader with his older brother Ivan. But after his brother Ivan had passed away, Peter became the sole Tsar of Russia, or, or the Emperor of Russia. And Peter was a very ambitious and eager leader. See, before Peter had taken over, Russia had rejected any type of influence from the Western nations after the Renaissance era. So this kind of left Russia as an isolated, in the dark ages, outdated. Peter understood that in order to change the country, he needed to learn more from the countries that were being successful. And at the time, Europe was conquering over a lot of parts of the land, and they had a very strong navy. Peter then goes on tour throughout Europe. But he does so in disguise. We'll need a disguise. The reason he chooses to do a disguise is so that way he can avoid all the royal formalities as he travels. Peter then makes a stop at the East Dutch India Company, where he's able to talk them into an internship in the shipyard. This is where Peter starts to learn some valuable information on shipbuilding, ship repairs, sailing, mapping, and even innovation with blueprint and sketching. Later, Peter is found in Great Britain, where he ends up actually getting a job with the Royal Navy shipyard over at Deptford. And while he stayed in Great, Great Britain, he even travels through schools, museums, factories, uh, arsenals. He even found himself sitting in on one of the parliament sessions. Now, roughly about two years has passed through this whole traveling. Peter then gets word that the rebels are uprising in Moscow, and so he now has to return home. It's roughly about 1698 at this time. After Peter makes it back to Moscow, he quickly eliminates the rebels by capturing them and imprisoning them. And once they Things had settled. Now his commander and army has decided to host a welcome back party for Peter, along with his second in command and other diplomats. This is where Peter decides to show that he is making new changes to Russia starting here. While at this welcome back party, Peter sits down in front of all of his diplomats and government officials and has a servant come over and clean shave his face in front of everyone. Peter then announces that he will be banning all beards in Russia, and anyone who refuses to shave their beard will have to deal with consequences. And these consequences were a little extreme, to say the least. They would literally pluck your beard hairs out from the roots, or they would skin your cheeks so that your beard would never grow back. And if you learned anything today, please consider hitting the like button. Thank you. Peter then implemented a task force, which I call the Fashion Police Task Force, who were then enforcing these new bans on beards. And that meant they were going through the city, shaving people or plucking people's hairs out of their faces. While the officials sat there in awe, they, they didn't quite understand what was going on. But no one said anything because this is the Tsar. He's the ruler. He's the emperor. Who are they to question him? And a lot of these people started shaving just in the fear of the consequences. See, Peter has been on travel for about two years in Europe, and as he's learned a lot of things, one thing that he has noticed is that a lot of European men were clean shaven. So by putting those two together, he puts the success of Europe in these countries with these strong military advances in other countries, along with clean shaven men, then you have the idea that Russia needs to adapt to. Much like in high school when you wanted to kind of copy the cool kid and to change your appearance a little bit to, to modify yourself, so did Peter when he wanted to be more like Europe. And so that included shaving off the traditional long, thick, full Russian beards and, and the long Russian coats that they were commonly known for that would drape down to about their ankles were no longer allowed. See, the Europeans and the French at the time, they wore shorter jackets that were just shy of their, their waist. And so implementing these new fashion tips was to help change Russia so that it was more European. Peter didn't stop here with fashion, along with introducing new things like schools, but schools that also focused on science. He created factories and, and started mining resources, which we all know Russia is full of resources. He even starts a shipyard where he starts building ships that have more of a Navy purpose and even introduces the first Russian Navy. Peter has taken an isolated in the Dark Ages or country and now set forth a plan to turn it into one of the biggest powerhouses of today. Did you know 30% of my viewers are non-subscribers? 
So hit the button. I know it's you. Hit it. Subscribe. Nailed it, bro. As we all know, changes can be hard to accept. New government policies sometimes are very unlike, much like the student loan debt forgiveness that everybody is fighting over. Whoa, whoa, let's not say stuff like that. This new policy on beard tax was so unpopular that the Russian Orthodox Church began to speak up. See, even before Peter had even come to ruling Russia, the Russian Orthodox Church was a big influence in politics. Peter decided to ban the traditional beard. The church decided to speak up. The Orthodox Church believed that God made man in, in the likeness of him. And so Jesus had a beard. So it was assumed that you had to grow a beard because shaving would be a sin. In fact, the Russians took this belief so serious that the church began to teach them that if they shaved their beards, they needed to keep it in their jackets or in a box under their pillow so that when they were buried, their beard would go with them and that maybe they would have a chance of entering into heaven. If you shaved your beard, that was a sin and you were likely not getting in. The Orthodox Church began to continue to speak out against Peter. They even got to the point where they started rumors with flyers saying that Peter was sinning, Peter was possessed by the devil while he was in Europe. That could only explain why he put a ban on beards. The church went to Peter multiple times trying to get him to change the policy on the beards. And at one point, Peter does kind of sit down and he starts thinking about how can he enforce a policy without technically forcing a policy. And that's when Peter starts thinking, Ooh, my <laughs> Peter then decides, maybe I will let my people have their beards, but we can make money from this as well. So we'll create a tax system but what's interesting about this tax system is that Peter created one that wasn't a flat fee for everyone. Instead, he created a tax system that was based on what people could afford. So if you were a wealthy merchant at the time, you were pretty heavily known. You had a lot of money. And so your tax fee would be 100 rubles per year. And if you were just a general in the military or a coachman or just a nobleman, your annual taxes for keeping your beer would be 60 rubles. Or if you were a peasant, you only had to pay one kopeck, which 100 kopecks equals one ruble, and you would only have to pay that kopeck every time you went into a city. Otherwise, you didn't have to pay. I really got to thinking about, is 100 rubles a lot of money? Because if you look at the conversion rate now, one ruble is roughly about one and a half pennies, which 100 rubles would be about a dollar fifty. So that doesn't seem that much, especially for taxes. However, if we go back to 1698, when the tax was being placed, the ruble was roughly about 70 cents. And then if you do the, the inflation cost of the dollar from back then to now, you're looking at roughly $5,457.72. I don't know if my beard is worth $5,457. I probably would shave too, especially if I had to pay this every year. So when I asked my Instagram users in the Beach Bum community, how much money would it take to shave their beards? I got a ton of different answers, but we always think the question is about how much money are we getting in exchange for shaving our beard, but we never think about how much we're paying not to shave our beard. Peter changed the behavior of his people by giving them a choice, and it was a very expensive choice. See, you either paid your beard tax and you got the little beard tax token, or you shaved it off. And Peter eventually got his clean shave in Russia, mostly because of this tax. Unfortunately, not all protests against government policies are as accessible as the French were when they did the mustache strike, which you can check out this video here. So I want you to remember this story the next time you're applying beard oil. How much is your freedom? to wear a beard work. And until next time, always be you.